Earlier in the year, when we were at CES in Las Vegas in the US, we're at the ASRock suite, and I was having a look through all their different motherboards, and this one caught my eye. This was the B450 Steel Legend. Now, it comes in a micro ATX version as well, but the biggest thing here is that they've redone the aesthetic completely with a new digital camo print. But of course, with all the motherboards that come through Tech Yes City, I'm gonna run it through its paces with things like VRM temperature tests, as well as testing out the onboard audio to see if it's really fit for someone who just wants to get into gaming and do a bit of overclocking. But before we do that, let's take this thing out of the box, snap some B-roll, and then put it on the test bench. So now all the testing is done and there's a mediocre point about this board and then there's some really good points. First, we'll get the mediocre out of the way. The VRM itself, it's a four plus two phase design. They've put about 140 grams worth of heat sinks on both, but since they're a split system, you're only really getting 70 grams of heat sink on the four phases, which connects to the CPU. For the MOSFETs, they're using SM4336 and SM4337s on the low and high side. And for the chokes, they got 60 amp solutions from Magic. And then on the caps, we're talking 12K Nichicon solutions. But when it all comes down to the VRM, we can have X amount of phases, all this fancy stuff, but I like to just put it through the real world paces. So we had the Ryzen 7 2700, eight core solution, 16 threads. We overclocked that to 4.1 gigahertz with a water cooling solution. And here we had uh, temperatures on the Ryzen CPU that were absolutely fine, but the VRM temperatures themselves with the IR camera got over 90 degrees. I believe I read up to 97 degrees. So it was okay. This was in a 26 degree ambient controlled environment, by the way. So they could get worse if we're on a really hot day in summer, but basically if you're overclocking on this motherboard, you will definitely, in my opinion, want to put a cooling solution, like a 12 centimeter fan or something like that, over this four phase design, just so it'll stay cool and it won't go near throttling. As for me personally, when I see 90 degrees on my IR camera or higher, that's sort of like a warning level. I'd like to stay below that for 24 seven usage. Then when it comes to the BIOS, ASRock do a great job of implementing a simple UEFI very easy to use and you can overclock with ease. But one thing that I have noticed is that they've improved the RGB software quite a lot. You've got 13 different patterns to choose from and since you can control this now with the addressable RGB headers, you can link up all the rest of your lights as we've done here in the background and then control that via the actual BIOS itself. So you don't need to install any software fully controllable by the BIOS. So basically I like what they've done with the polychrome solution this time around on the Steel Legend. Now onto some other important things with this board, you get USB 3.1 Gen 2, which I believe is up to 10 gigabits per second transfers. Uh, I think there's a new fancy name for it nowadays that people pointed out in the comments. That's just completely over my head. I'm just gonna keep sticking to the USB 3, USB 3.1, USB 3.1 Gen 2. It's pretty easy to understand, right? You keep going up in speeds. But that aside, we tested out the USB 3 speeds. They were absolutely fine. Tested out the onboard Realtek NIC solution. That was fine up to about 113 megabytes per second, just constantly. It wasn't dropping out at all. So that's a reliable solution if you used to use that in a home network or a NAS. And then on top of that, the audio. This is where things get very interesting for the B450 Steel Legend, simply because they've used the Realtek ALC892, which is lower in number than the ALC1220. And you'd probably think that it's inferior. And yes, it would be, but is it that inferior to the point where someone would really notice it in the real world? When I put it through all the stress tests here, it performed phenomenally well. It's some of the best onboard audio I've seen. And that's the thanks to the Nichicon gold caps that they've used on the onboard audio solution itself. So you can have the best DAC in the world, but if you've got crap components connected to that DAC, then your audio is gonna sound crap. But the good thing is here, they've used a relatively good onboard codec and they've coupled that with good componentry. So the end result was pretty much no drop off below 10 Hertz. I think I measured not even a one decibel drop off under 10 Hertz, which means your bass is gonna come through very clearly, very loudly on either your headphones or analog out speakers. But then we moved through the frequency response curve and that was relatively flat the whole way through as well no imbalances. So this solution is gonna serve you well for audio listeners if you're playing competitive games or if you're listening to music and you're on a budget. 
On top of that, the crosstalk levels were phenomenal all the way up to the volume level of 100. There was no leakage on either left or right channel, and we're talking about minus 80 decibels of crosstalk, which is very good for stereo listeners. However, one thing I did notice between the left and right channels was there is about a 1.5 decibel difference in the balance, uh, but this was easily corrected by just dropping the volume level of the right channel in Windows down to 90 versus 100 on the left. And now with the audio itself, ASRock have decided to double down. So the audio out's really good, but then the audio in's equally as good. That's your mic in port, where I tested it and they're not using noise suppression. So your voice is going to come through very clearly. And this is all the way up to plus 20 decibels, volume level of 80. After that, it did start to introduce some noise, but these levels will be fine for pretty much any mic headset out there. So if you want to stream on a budget, this motherboard is definitely going to be one of those components you may wish to consider. So with all the important testing out of the way, here is the conclusion time and the most important thing I believe with a B450 motherboard, and that is the price or the value. And this is where they've got two variants. They've got the micro ATX version, the B450M Steel Legend, and that's coming in at 90 USD. And I think it even went on sale for 80 USD. In Australia, you can get it for around 139 Aussie dollars. And at these prices, it's a solid board. As we saw with the tests, uh, everything checks out and even if you want to overclock, you can do that. Definitely with a six core, you're going to have no problems. But when it comes to an eight core and you're going for those higher 4.2 gigahertz overclocks, for example, you'll definitely want to get a fan over the VRM just for longevity. But in relation to my Ryzen 7 2700, that thing just tops out at 4.1 gigahertz. It's just generally a bad chip. I've even tried it on the ROG board here as well as a Tai Chi board, and it's the same thing. My 2700X, that goes up to 4.3 gigahertz. That's really good. Um, so I didn't really get lucky there. But basically, if you're into overclocking, six core is fine. Eight core, you will want to get some extra cooling on that VRM heatsink. Though everything else on this board checks out, and it checks out in a really good way. The onboard audio is phenomenal, both the mic in and the audio out ports. You've got great connectivity on the back, ample amount of USB 3 ports, USB 3 out, dual NVMe slots as well for installing NVMe drives. And on top of that, you've got a really nice aesthetic, and you've got RGB up the north and south which is addressable and you can control it within the BIOS without needing any extra software. So in my opinion, the $90M solution is an absolute win, but then they've got the full size version, which is 110 US dollars. So this is where for that extra $20, I believe you're getting an extra two one speed PCIe Gen 2 lanes, as well as converting that bottom 16X Gen 2 slot on the micro ATX version to a Gen 3 on the full size version. So are those extra PCIe slots worth it to you? for 20 bucks. For me personally, probably no, but if you really want the uh, aesthetic and the full size ATX board, then that option is there. But anyway guys, that's about it for today's review of the B450 Steel Legend from ASRock. Definitely checks out. And also let us know in the comment section below what you think of that digital camo look. I'm definitely liking it. I put it in a build here and it's looking pretty schmick, but as always, love reading your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button. If you want to cop some merch, some Tech yes City merch, link is in description below, as well as the Instagram link. I'll put that in the description below as well, where I'm posting up some cool behind the scenes stuff, as well as stories. I'm getting into that lately too. And if you enjoy the content enough, sub button's there, bell button's there, if you want to see the videos the moment they drop. With that aside, I'll catch you in another video very soon. We've got that P106 testing. We've got to retest that. So stay tuned for that. See you in the next video. Peace out for now. Bye. We can have all the fancy components. We can have 20 million phases if you want. <laughs> but if you're going for the full size version, that's coming in at $110. So it is $20 more. And for that price, I believe you're just getting two 1X slots of PCIe Gen 2 and, uh, and, and one PCIe Gen 3 16 slot so with all the impasse so now with all the important testing out of the way comes the most important price with a B450 motherboard okay. decent VRM that will take good care of six cores and if you're on an eight core just grab a fan whack it over that VRM and you should have happy days even then but the I do like what they've done with the build quality the aesthetic the RGB control and also the bling Okay, do it again, let's do it again.